Recently, a flurry of papers have come out about paleoclimatology, ice ages, and magnetic excursions. And tonight, we want to bring you up to speed on what that actually means, what we know about the past, and what we can glean for our future. The first paper, Geomagnetic Dipole Moment, Variations for the last glacial period inferred from cosmogenic radionucleotides in Greenland ice cores via disentangling the climate and production signals. Now they're using proxy data here in this paper, beryllium-10 from the Neem ice cores to look at 11.7 thousand years ago to 108 thousand years ago. And they found the relationship between the proxy data and the climate data. That's the first paper. The second paper is constraining the Earth's dynamic ellipticity from Ice Age dynamics. And so, before we confuse you with those two titles and those papers, let's just walk through the last 60 million years on Earth. There are major periods of geologic time on the top of this graph, the Paleocene, which ended around 55 million years ago. The Eocene extended from 55 million to 33 million, 34 million years ago. Then the Oligocene went to about 23 million years ago. The Miocene was from 23 million years ago to just recently, and the onset of the Pliocene and the Pleistocene, or the beginning of the next major ice age that we're now living. Many people don't realize they're living in an ice age but we are. And in fact, the last three to four million years has been a, quite a deep ice age relative to other ice ages. Now, let's get to some of the graphics on constraining the Earth's dynamic ellipticity. And they're talking about Milankovitch cycles here and how they affect the planet. And this is my field of study in graduate school. Now, I want you to look at this graph. It's 60 million years of proxy data describing these Milankovitch perturbations. And let's just go from 35 million years to present. And it's older on the right, brand new on the left here. Here's where we are on the left. But if you look at the graph, these up and down wiggles, each of these spikes up and down would be a single cosmic catastrophe event. That's how many happened over the last 35 million years. Look at them. Thousands upon thousands. It never stops. And here we're just looking at the last half a million years, the most recent half a million. We have very high resolution on this proxy data. And the stars at the bottom are the glacial maximums. The last glacial maximum is here, just around 16,000 years ago. And here, around 140,000 years ago. And here around 260, and here, 340, and again, at 430. Now, these are, these are not the only times the Earth is covered with ice. The Earth is covered with ice for about 80,000 of the 100,000-year span of these maximums. All ice, lots of ice here. All ice, lots of ice during this 50,000-year span. So it is the inception and the drop-down that begins the Ice Age right at this point. And that's the point we're living, this drop down, right now in the Holocene. We're living the drop down. So in no one's future will they see maximum glaciation, unless they live for 80,000 years. And these major vertical events happen every 100,000 years, and the last one is over. It just happened. So no more big events, no more Adam and Eve stories. It's time to put the catastrophes in their place. And I'm one of them. And I know about cosmic catastrophe. I know about glacial periods in Earth's history. I've looked at the rock record for all, almost all of the entire 600 million year. I, I've looked in basins, not just in this period, way before then. Going way back. And we're going to get to that. But let's talk about known magnetic excursions. They happen 12,000, 23, 
35,000, 35,000, 45,000, 60,000, 72,000, 85,000, so on and so forth. You can do the math. But how does that relate here? It doesn't relate at all. If the last one was 12,000 years ago, well, that probably was there. And then the one before that, 23,000 years ago, well, that was not even visible. In fact, none of them are. Almost none of them. And if we can come back here to some of the higher resolution data, let me just move this forward here to page 7. I really like this proxy data. And here we're looking at the last million years on Earth. And that Milankovitch signal, which many people don't know what it is, it, it might not be orbital perturbations. This could be the cosmic wave we're looking at here coming in on regular intervals, regular periodicities, with ebbs and flows, with major spikes every 100,000 years. And the last one just happened, which means the next 100,000 years is going to be minor perturbations, small events. One of those small events happened to be the extinction of the Neanderthal. Now, the Neanderthal didn't get washed away or frozen in ice like the mammoths. They just died. They died out while another species proliferated. This is the future we're going into. The magnetic excursion we're going into isn't one of catastrophic waves washing over the world and the sun penetrating to the surface, freezing hominids with food in their mouth. It's not happening. That already happened. That big event is in our past and will not occur for 80,000 or more years. Based on proxy data, based, based on data going back a million years, there hasn't been a single perturbation from this pattern. Now, what there has been is mass extinctions during these small movements between major cycles. I think the Adam and Eve story is this event, the Younger Dryas event, and it happened again 120,000 years ago. Prior to that, it happened 230,000 years ago. It happened 340,000 years ago. It happened 440,000 years ago. It happened 500,000, so on and so forth. Those are the major events where the crust may slip, but the, the interim events, the interstitial events, there's no evidence of that happening. Zero. Not a single shred. So the next magnetic excursion we're going into does not involve crustal slip or oceans washing over us because there's no evidence for it. Now, if you quote Doug Vogt or suspicious observers as evidence, that's hearsay, not evidence. There's not a single shred of evidence geologically to suggest that anything happens in between these 100,000-year cycles. I can prove it to you at the rock in any quarry that shows these events that there is no catastrophic washing over of the planet between the events. There's very limited evidence that it even happens on these cusps. There is large evidence that there's a 1.4 million year cycle that's very evident in the rock record. So there's an even bigger grand, a grand cycle that no one's talking about. And we're not hitting that point either. We're just on a minor perturbation that happens to be a magnetic excursion which is not insignificant. It means increased cosmic rays, the complete breakdown of all weather systems, the empire model, model and modern humanity, the technological society we're living in is all going to go away. That's what this means. This is a reset cycle on society, not on the planet. The planet reset happened during the Gothenburg which only happens every 100,000 years, based on everything we know, everything we've ever recorded in science since the inception of science. We have very high resolution proxy data on what happens with the global mean temperatures. You're looking at that for the last half a million. And these major events that I believe might be forced by micronova events only happen every 100,000 years. In between, these are much more minor perturbations and almost nothing to worry about, in my opinion. Unless you're worried about society breaking down, the grid failing, and people coming to get your stuff, that's what you need to be worried about. Not moving to high ground, so to speak. 
although I would not live in major cities or near anywhere within the coast, I would be definitely a mile above the <laughs> surface of the ocean because anything can happen during these events. During magnetic excursions, these minor perturbations in between the big spikes, huge volcanoes go off, huge tsunamis occur, major juxtaposition of land masses, earthquakes, uplift, isostasy, mountain building. And then if we couple that with a connection to space because our magnetosphere is waning, evolution, cosmic lightning bolts, auroras at the equator. That's our future. Not the catastrophic flooding event that already occurred. That's not happening again for another 85,000 years. Based on science. So, anyone suggesting otherwise is a shill, in my opinion. Hope you got something out of the video. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. When the facts are staring you in the face and anyone saying anything otherwise, well, is a disgrace. Based on science. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. When the Pacific is not about to wash over the earth, but the empire is about to fail, how will you prepare? Are you learning how to grow food? Do you have a bug out plan? You need to get away from major population centers if the grid goes down, and it will. Mark my words. We love each and every one of you. Thanks to all of our one-time donors, our Patreons, Subscribe to the channel if you haven't and share this with like-minded people. And that's a boom to knowledge. Click on one of the other boxes to gain more of it and be safe. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, 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 nah.